Personal finance practice problem using Excel. Book value per share calculation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, answer key. Let's look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're analyzing a corporation possibly for investment opportunities. Noting that a corporation, separate legal entity, breaking out the ownership of it into equal units called stocks. Usually we're thinking about publicly traded companies, those trading on a public exchange. We're going to be figuring out then the book value per share. The second tab is going to have some pre-formatted cells so you can work the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is going to have blank cells so we can add the Excel formatting as we go. If you don't have any of this, that's okay. You can just open up a new worksheet. I would format the baseline formatting first before starting if I was doing a new worksheet. By selecting the entire worksheet with the triangle, I usually right click on it and then go down to the format of the cells. Currency is what I usually use, brackets, negative, and red, brackets for negative and red, no dollar sign and no decimals. And then I'm not gonna hit okay because I already have this, I'm just gonna X out of it. Then add your data on the left-hand side. This is just an image to show us the calculation, so you don't really need that. And then we can make a skinny C column, and then we're good to go with column D here. Okay, so we got the company information. Now remember, this kind of stuff you would basically get from the financial statements of the company. And so we've got on the balance sheet, we would have the assets. This is where they stand as of a point in time. And so we might be doing this like at the end of the year, for example, but we could do it at any given time, possibly quarterly or yearly. And then we've got the liabilities. That's what they owe to third parties. And then the difference between the two would be the equity. We'll calculate it here. You can see that on the on the uh, ba on the balance sheet as well. We got the stock shares issued. So we're going to say that the number of shares that have been issued are the 13 million shares. So the book value calculation will be calculated down below. We've got the shareholders equity minus the preferred stock. That would be if the company has preferred stock. We're not going to deal with preferred stock here. But note that the preferred stock is kind of an equity interest that acts kind of like uh, more like a fixed income to some degree. And we're focused on the common stock, preferred stock having to be paid first. We would subtract out the preferred stock. So and then we're going to divide by the weighted average common shares outstanding. Now, note, we're just going to use the common shares outstanding that are given to us here. You might use the common shares outstanding at the point in time that you're making the calculation. But. Uh, just realize that you could also say, well, I want to I want to try to figure out the average shares over the time frame that I am considering. So whether that be like a year or a quarter, for example, and uh, if there was no change in the shares outstanding, meaning no new shares were issued, no stock splits or buybacks or anything like that, then they might be the same at the beginning and end of the period. So we're going to be using the this number here as if it's basically the end of the period where could you find the beginning number and then the ending number you could divide it by two that would be the common method to use you could find it at the balance sheet at the end of the last period uh, and then the balance sheet at the end of the current period that you are in see if there's a difference in the common shares outstanding and if you want to take the weighted average you could you could basically add them two up and divide it by two for example Okay, so let's take the book value per share. So let's figure this out, the book value per share. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make this a little bit wider. Make that a little bit wider here. Let's make it black and white up top. So we'll select these two cells, go to the home tab font group. I'm gonna hit the bucket drop down, make that black and then the lettering white. And so first we'll just do the calculation, which is basically net assets or the total equity in the company which would be assets minus liabilities so for example we'll just take the assets first equals the assets i'm going to say equals pull over the total assets this would be found on the balance sheet the two uh 210 million and then equals the liabilities this is what is owed to third parties uh so we're going to say this is going to be equal to the 65 million let's put an underline here font group and underline the difference between the two we could say is uh, equity 
equity. You could also think of it as uh, net assets, net assets, which you which is a useful kind of idea because the equity represents what is owed to the owners or the net assets you can think about in essence as the value of the company. If the company say was to liquidate, for example, they would sell all the assets and get this amount in theory, and then they would pay off all the third party liabilities, this amount in theory to get the difference, which can then be allocated to the owners if they were to liquidate or close up shop, that would be the general idea. But of course, the assets might not be sold for that amount because you might have equipment stuff that's on there on depreciated uh, cost as opposed to what you know, what you, what you could per sell it for at the current day, because we don't know exactly what you could sell it for until you actually try to sell it on the market when you think talking about things like buildings and equipment, for example. So let's take a, a subtraction, this minus this, that's gonna be the equity or the net assets. You could probably, you could find that number on the balance sheet as well, the total equity. And then we're gonna take the stocks outstanding. We're gonna say that there's no preferred stock. So we'll just take the number of stocks outstanding. The stocks represent equal ownership uh, in units of the company. So this does not mean that 13 million people own the company because not a bunch of people don't own one particular stock. You could have one person owning multiple stocks, but we want to be able to break down the information on a per unit basis that are equal per unit basis. So this will be the book value, value per share, and we'll divide this out. This is gonna be equal to the 145 million divided by the 13 million. Let's put some decimals here, home tab, uh, number group, adding some decimals. And let's put an underline here. We're gonna go to the font group and underline. Let's put some blue borders around it, font group, put some borders up top and hit the bucket drop down and make it blue. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more color wheel standard it's right there so that's the one i typically use you could use whatever you would like so so note that that means that in theory then if we were basically to liquidate the company is one of the easiest way to kind of consider this i would then get the assets of the, of this amount we could imagine in cash if i was to sell everything and then pay off the liabilities of the 65 million giving us the net assets or the equity of 145 million, we would have that cash then that we could pay off to the owners of the company. And there's 13 million, not owners, but shares. Some owners might be owning multiple shares. So we broke it out into a per share basis, and that would be a book value per share of the $11.15. Uh, so again, multiple people might own multiple shares, for example, and so they would get whatever they would get times that many shares. Now, remember that that's not completely uh, correct because we don't know what the assets are if you were actually to sell the, the company because they're on there at depreciated cost, not at, at, at uh, fair value. And note, you might argue, some people might argue, well, we should transfer to fair value and so on, and you can make that argument and so on, but note that even if we did, we couldn't really accurately value some of the big assets like equipment and, and buildings because um, it's hard to know what those are valued at because they're unique. <laughs> they're not they're not like uh, like the stocks which are trading on an exchange. So that's going to be an estimate no matter what we do really. And then we've got the liabilities and that's going to give us the equity. So that's going to be the amount per share. Now that number note is based on the idea that we could just liquidate the company and and basically give out the assets minus the liabilities but when we're investing in a company what we're really looking for is their earnings potential we're looking to see how well they use their assets and how well they use their leverage and their liabilities which they generally took on to pick up the assets to generate revenue in the future that's why we're investing we're not investing in the company just so they can hold on to some assets that have have the underlying value, might, we might that might be okay. We might like that, but we would like them to be using those assets to basically generate revenue. So we can then take this comparison, for example, the book value per share, and we would expect the market value to generally be higher than the book value per share because that's going to be the market interpreting how well the 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 company is going to be able to use this these assets, these net assets, in order to generate 
more revenue in the future. If the market price was less than the book value per share, note what, what that would invite potential investors to do. Like if the market price was only like $8, then it, somebody could say, hey, let's go in there and just buy the, all the shares out. They could just buy all the shares of the, of the company or a majority share to a takeover of the company and then just liquidate the company and they could they can make a profit because the company's worth even without revenue generation the 1150 so you would expect the market price to be something higher than than the book value and then of course you want to be doing some relative comparisons to the relationship between for example the book value and the market price f within particular industries because different industries are going to have different spreads in terms of of that difference but that's a that's the general idea. That's the calculation. Let's do a quick review. Did I did I spell anything wrong? No, it's perfect. It's perfect.